Hello, everybody. Um, so just going to give you a quick rundown on what's going to go on. We uh, have six teams presenting instead of four. Uh, the third place teams in each panel were very, very close, and the judges didn't think it was fair to not let them have another chance at um, the, the first place position. Um, so what's going to happen is I'm going to call up the teams one at a time. They're going to get four minutes to present. Uh, since we have more judges this time than in the panels and we have a maximum amount of people who can be on screen at the same time, we are just going to have the moderators and the presenting teams. The judges are allowed to ask one question each after the four minutes is up. And um, they will request to do that by asking to share their audio and video. If you do not have a question, you don't have to request to join. Um, I would like to take this time to thank all of you for your participation and to thank our judges once again for volunteering their time today. Uh, the first team to present will be Dot Pi. Um, if you can, could you request to join now? And I will add you to the chat in a couple minutes. Hello. Hi. Sorry about that. I have internet issues. So. Yeah, no problem. Uh, whichever one of you two is presenting, you can go ahead and share your screen if that's what you're doing. Yes, that will be me. One second. No problem. Can you see my screen now? Uh, nope, not yet. Oh, it's coming now. Okay, perfect. Okay, are you yep. two ready to begin? Uh, just a second. All right, I'm starting. Uh, hey, everyone. Um, our team is Dot Pi. I'm Samir, and with me is Ahmed. And we are going to be dealing with uh, a solution for the educational impact uh, due to COVID. So, <clears throat> the problem here, uh, and due to COVID, is that online learning has uh, disconnected students, uh, and students are not able to meet up for group study sessions. And according to a research published uh, in the 2005 issue of Linguistics and Education, students who study together in groups learn better material than. Uh, when they sit alone at their desks. And moreover, sitting in groups helps students to discuss the concepts with others and test their understanding. It also helps clarify any questions and they can also motivate each other to study better. <clears throat> but the pandemic has caused uh, people to not socially interact with e each other as they used to. And therefore our solution that is <clears throat> lecture parties allows uh, users to uh, use an interactive web application that allows students to study together in groups. Uh, <clears throat> so there are a lot of platforms that already allow users to uh, uh, collaborate with each other and share screens and stuff, but there are a few problems with them. For instance, Discord. Discord is a booming application, but however, the app itself has an age restriction that doesn't allow users below 13 years old. Also, uh, CAST is another solution, but it only allows users to play, uh, to play videos from specific platforms such as YouTube or Tubi. So let's see a demo of our app here. <clears throat> yep. So we have the application dashboard interface here. There are um, four panels. Uh, one of them is cr for creating a room, and another one is for any doubts that the student might have, uh, along with their uh, lecture uh, indicator indicators and time slots at which the student had doubts. And there is a panel for um, study groups, so users can have specific and set study groups. So for instance, for the, in, if I have a doubt, um, I can select the doubt, and I can choose to email directly um, to the professor. So the application would generate an email with the relevant information that will help the um, student to easily write the email. 
Um, and for starting a party, uh, we, we first choose a file. I have a file chosen already. Um, when we go to create a room, um, it opens the video uh, with all the uh, playback controls. Um, the benefit of this uh, application is that it allows users to chat with each other. So um, the uh, users can um, st start chatting with each other and uh, press commands such as uh, hyphen dbt for uh, registering a doubt into the system and the system would add it to the database. Um, users can also uh, co copy links and share it with uh, professors or other students uh, to join their chat rooms. Um, and uh, if they want to exit the room, uh, they can just press the exit button and it will take, it, take them back to the dashboard. That's it for the demo. Okay. Judges, if you have any questions, you may feel free to request to join the chat now. Yeah, I have um, a question. Um, could you help me to understand what is the specific value added to, like what is the value added to have a specific platform, platform uh, for group study when they can use like uh, Zoom and Slack and how, how, are you, how do you distinguish yourself? Yep, certainly. So, um, this platform offers better interactivity than Zoom. We have a feature that will let uh, students draw on uh, on the screen and that will be visible by other uh, group members as well. And um, the, uh, the doubt registering system is not found in Zoom and other applications. So um, the email creation and interaction with the professors is better with this application. Okay. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. I have a question that what level of uh, students would be able to uh, take advantage of this app? So is it for only for university students or a different level too? Uh, no, this one would be available for all of the students of any age group. Uh, we might have a uh, tour tour in the future. We might have added controls for uh, students that are in elementary school or uh, kindergarten. But uh, the interface would be quite simple for all age groups to use the application. So my question is, is this something that the uh, instructor would have to initiate? They would have to initiate, yes, I want to have things on this platform and that the and how, how would we get instructors to be on board with uh taking advantage of these services yep so uh instructors do not have to initiate this this is uh more of a student initiative um where uh, students can learn better if they learn in groups and uh, they can interact with each other better and it helps in the overall sense of progress uh, otherwise, students can feel very left out and um, not uh, like they they can be stuck at a specific point of a lecture while the uh, whole class is um, progress further. So uh, it will help in that way. And for uh, uh, for collaboration with professors, uh, we can uh, like for example, there are office hour hours exist uh, that are currently existing. Um, instead of those uh, or an add-on of those, uh, students can ask the professor to join and they can ask, ask doubts to the professor as well. So I'm wondering what's the business model that you're operating with here? So do you intend to charge students, organizations? Are you gonna have advertisements? How do you plan to make money with this platform? Yes, so the initial model is a freemium revenue model, uh, whereupon users would have to pay to remove ads or uh, bypass a two hour limit to their sessions. But uh, we potentially see um, selling this application to organizations, specifically universities, to implement them. Are there any more judges that would like to ask a question before I ask, uh, before I thank the team and ask them to leave the stage?
you have a question there in chat, if you can read it. Oh, there he is. Right. His uh, mic isn't working. Do you uh, are you able to read the chat, or do you want me to read it out for you? Uh, sure, I can. I can read it. Yeah. Um, so the question is: Do you see this as being adopted by universities and rebranding or personalizing it? Um, yes, certainly. Um, if the app gains traction, uh, the uh, like for example, we have Bongo that's adopted by D2L. Uh, that's a different platform for uh, online rooms. Similarly, we can have our application for interactive group sessions in real time. Hello there. Um, just a quick question. Just uh, you sort of just brought it up, but how do you see yourself interacting with like different learning management systems and those those types of products? Uh, so D2L already has an online room, uh, uh, online uh, a discussion thread in it. For instance, if you take D2L, and uh, in the discussion session, people can just use a chat uh, to interact with other classmates. We could also maybe add a link that would uh, lead them to this uh, specific web app. And they could uh, create an online room, and uh, the all their classmates will be notified about it. And maybe right. such uh, such an uh, interactive uh, web page uh, could be used to as a built-in thing in other platforms. Okay. Well, thank you, Dot Pi, for your presentation. Um, I'm going to ask you to leave the stage now. And would the four please request to join the chat? Thanks. Is it just the three of you today? Will there your fourth member be joining for the presentation? No, we will be only three. Okay. Um, just would like to point out that Blaze is on deck. I will also post it in the chat. Um, once again, you have four minutes to present, and then the judges will join to ask questions one at a time. Are you ready to go? Yes. <clears throat> sure thing. Your four minutes begins now. So hello, my name is Sami, and today I will present you Birmi. But before we dive into what Birmi is, let's take a look at what the problems tries to solve. First of all, COVID hit uh, the hospitality industry hard, especially pubs and bars. And as Belgium, this is very painful because all pubs, at least in Belgium, have been closed for more than a year now, leading to a full year of missed income and loss, a lot are now facing permanent closure. These closures would be devastating to our local economy and social activity, as pubs hold a very important function in our society as, place, uh, as a place of gathering and enjoyment and local employment. For those who, who survive the lockdown, there will be still a long way to recover from their current financial situation. Unlike restaurants and hotels, there is no real e-commerce platform solution that is already readily available for bars. Additionally, marketing initiatives are hard to do for smaller pubs and bars and cost a lot of money. This is where BeerMe comes into play. BeerMe would be a mobile application that would allow consumers to pay drinks in advance and hold a balance of paid drinks in their virtual wallets at their favorite bars. It would also allow people to donate money, money to their favorite bar without necessarily ordering drinks and additionally, Birmi would function as a free marketing platform for any bar on the application. Consumer would make an account on Birmi. They will search for their favorite bar. Once they have found their favorite bar, they add it to their favorite list. And from there, they can navigate to the order page. They would add then whatever they want, order and tip and pay online. Once they have paid, the order would be added to their wallets. Once the bar reopened, they would then order normally. And when it's time to pay, they would scan their wallets uh, using a QR code. And the order drinks would be subtracted from their balance of paid uh, drinks in their wallets. We also want this app to be used to speed up the recovery of pubs by finding way to initiative, in, initiative, 
incentivize people to visit pubs. This would be pos possible for brewery to the consumer themselves. Breweries would issue coupons for free drinks as a marketing tool for new products or existing ones. This would incentivize to go out and have drinks at your favorite bar. As the ben Belgian says, one drink, one drink is no drink and never two drinks without three. Individual pubs would issue uh, promo codes, think happy hour code through social media or through push notification on the app itself. Consumers would be able to send paid for drinks to the virtual wallet of uh, friends and coworkers to promote their favorite bar or as a thank you or reward for completing a project or milestone in life. This again would incentivize the people to gather again see each other and consume more, thus helping the recovery of bars and as bonus, stimulate social activities again. Thank you for listen, listening and don't forget to support your local uh, pub as soon as you are allowed. Thank you, The Four. We will now ask our judges to join us if they have any questions. Yes. Hi. Uh, great app. Great app. Great, great solution for it. as someone who spent a lot of time in bars and pubs throughout many countries, I could see the possibility of this. I just want to ask about the regul the regulatory issues and whether that will be a fatal flaw, because obviously I I'm not really cognizant of all the European regulations, but here in Canada, each province has different regulations around um pubs and alcohol control etc have you thought about that in terms of developing your app and the scalability in respect to the regulatory potential barriers um so we don't really know much about canada unfortunately so we don't know about specific regulations uh around alcohol selling alcohol promoting alcohol um we kind of went for a Belgian perspective and in Belgium, okay. uh, the only regulation is that you need to be of age to, to be able to drink. There's some restrictions on promoting alcohol, but all in all, I don't think we, we would break any regulations here in Belgium at, uh, at least. Okay, awesome. So it is very much a Belgian solution. Unfortunately, going to the Netherlands or France or somewhere like that. Uh, uh, Netherlands would be, would be okay. France, or European uh, European countries would be fine because I think regulations are pretty much. Um, I think only the UK probably has a different regulation, but it would it could be possible to deploy this in France, the Netherlands, without a problem. Germany, uh, our neighboring countries overseas, I think uh, North America is quite have more regulations around alcohol than we Europeans do, unfortunately. Or, awesome. Uh, Thank you so much. All right. Excellent presentation. Thanks, you guys, very much. Um, I had a couple of questions that came up, but one in particular was, particularly with the wallet system, is there a way in which we're kind of putting off the problem? So from what I understood from the presentation, um, I can buy drinks, fill up my wallet with drinks from my favorite local bar. Uh, they're getting that money right away. But then presumably, eventually, these are going to open up again, and I'm going to come in, and I'm going to want my drink. So um, even though they got the money a couple of months ago, I'm going to be looking for my beer right now. So is there a way in which that's putting off this economic issue that's facing our local pubs and bars? What do you exactly mean by putting off? Uh, so that although they'll be getting the money right now, there'll be a huge demand as soon as they open up and there will be no money actually coming in because they will have received it, let's say, months ago. Um, okay, so uh, I can see maybe the, the problem uh, problem here, but in the end, if they're struggling right now, since they're closed to, to stay open, I think that, that they would be willing to take that risk to have the money now to be able to eventually stay afloat until the lockdown ends. And that's the part of the marketing of our app is to stimulate more consumption to offset the fact that you, you, you already have a, a due balance of drinks that you already got the money for. 
um, and with promotional stunts from breweries who, are, who have way more cash, huh? they could inject free beers to, to, to stimulate uh, the population to consume more, thus increasing uh, revenues for local pubs. All right, great. Thank you very much. Any more questions, judges, for the four? Okay, I'm not seeing any more requests, so I would like to thank you for your presentation once again. And I would like to invite Blaze to ask to join the stream. Thank you. Bye. In 2018, Newfoundland saw more than 500. Oh, are you guys ready to present? I just need to set the timer. <laughs> it's okay. I don't see the. I see the uh, screen, but I don't know if you guys have like a a slideshow or it's just the screen. You someone's gonna go through it. Oh uh, yeah, it's just the screen. Okay, no problem. Um, so we are nervous. You are on deck, and the blaze. Your four minutes begins now. All right. In 2018, Newfoundland saw more than 550,000 travelers visiting the province. For comparison, the population of the province sits around 520,000 today. The COVID-19 pandemic has prevented travelers from coming in, and this is devastating for small businesses and communities that are built around sharing the spirit of Newfoundland with those who come from away. In order to get these businesses back on their feet, we propose a platform for virtual tourism that would bring the spirit of Newfoundland to the homes of people across the world through virtual events and access to local goods. Our website, NL Life, strives to make the Newfoundland experience fully interactive, whether somebody be at home, missing home, or looking for a place to call home. So here's our demo website where you can book virtual tours and events and also have a look at some local restaurants and shops. If we scroll down a bit here, we can see a collection of virtual tours that show off some of the best tourist attractions in Newfoundland, including Iceberg Tours, Jelly Bean Row, and many others. Virtual tours can be done using live streaming, virtual reality, 360 degree videos, and more in order to make them a truly interactive experience. Here we have a map of Newfoundland uh, where we've marked some of these attractions. And if you click on them, you can get some information on the virtual tour that they will be shown in. Then we have our about section, which explains how NL Life works in a bit more detail. Tours will be fully interactive with experienced tour guides and can be enjoyed either as a group or privately. We think that by hosting these virtual tours, we can help revive Newfoundland's tourism sector in the short term, as well as encourage more people to travel here once the pandemic is over, which will help our economy in the long term. Next, we have our restaurant page, which showcases some local restaurants so that our users can get a taste of what else Newfoundland has to offer which of course includes food and local goods. Lastly, we have the shop page, which will allow users to buy and view items from local sellers, and particularly to buy souvenirs that relate to virtual tours that they've been on. We've learned a lot from the COVID-19 pandemic. And one thing we shouldn't forget is the power technology has to keep us all connected no matter where we are. We have the perfect opportunity to come together to help local businesses thrive and give the world a taste of the culture, kindness, and hospitality that Newfoundland is known for, which will without a doubt have them coming back for more. Uh, and that concludes the demo and we're open for questions now. Thank you. Judges, if you have a question for Blaze, feel free to join the chat and ask it now. Uh, you may get some background noise and my dog may start barking so just a warning um the uh the question i had is um how are you monetizing the, your service uh, the, 
to the applied force industry? Uh, <clears throat> we were looking at uh, having more uh, basic tours be, uh, be free to give people a taste and have more enhanced experiences uh, at a cost, really to get the benefit of it being a virtual tour uh, more than anything. And uh, as well as with the, the shop front and, uh, and with the restaurants, for the restaurants, we'd probably have a small fee for the restaurants signing up for us flat. And for sales, we'd probably take a small percentage of proceeds. Okay, so it's a percentage proceeds because I, I was assuming that the, those costs were going to the virtual tour operator, but you take a portion of the proceeds from, from each one of those sales. Uh, yeah, that's how we would. Unless, like, ideally, if we had a uh, full backing from uh, the Newfoundland government, then we could operate with as much, uh, with as little cost coming to us and as most cost going back towards these uh, smaller businesses. I wonder when you say uh, personalized experience. So, could you expand on what what does it mean personalized and how are you going to attract people to um, by offering personalized experience? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, when it comes to tourism in general, kind of everything is a personalized experience. I worked. Uh, uh, with the tourism for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador for about three years locally for uh, the Kitty Wake Coast area. And one thing you always learn is, uh, you know, you can show people the same stuff, but everyone wants to interact with it in a different way. So when it comes to these virtual experiences, we want to have different offerings for even the same thing, whether that be something as simple as maybe somebody just wants, you know, a straight up view like they were on a boat tour, or maybe somebody would like a uh, a drone perspective, like uh, from heads up to really get in more of the nature and kind of have things be more surreal and a more enhanced experience that you wouldn't be able to get uh, otherwise. Okay, thank you. So my question refers to the restaurants. How can I get the experience, um, the intended experience from, particip from participating restaurants? I understand that the virtual tour and the shops, but I can't really see if I'm sitting, let's say, in a pub in Belgium and I want to go to this website and I want to get some experience uh, at a local Newfoundland local restaurant, how, how can I get the, the experience? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, for the restaurants, we'd probably have uh, the participating place have uh, kind of like an intro video showing off uh, showing off just uh, the layout of the restaurant and what they offer there. Uh, so that way uh, people can know what it is that they're coming for beforehand. Uh, the main thing for the restaurants uh, would be obviously they can do reservations through us and uh, That'll help for you know uh, less tech inclined uh, smaller businesses to enable them to reach a brighter audience and get more marketing. Uh, this way, we can kind of have Anna Life be almost a a one stop shop for if you just wanted a a purely virtual experience or if you were uh, planning and you know you don't want to have to read through pages and pages of stuff. You want to be able to see what it is that you're gonna get a taste of. Thank you. Hi, so great presentation. Um, I noticed that you were doing it for uh, live tours. How would you get around um, the issues of time zone differences? Like if I wanted to go on a virtual tour after work in Vancouver, uh, that's going to be dark here and it's not going to be a great view of say, you know, Petty Harbor, right? Um, mm. so how would you get around uh, dealing with that issue? Uh, well, uh, ideally we uh, try and do everything we can to make sure that we can uh, optimize our technology so that way we can provide the best experience regardless of the time. Uh, so, you know, whether that be higher quality 
cameras that we'd uh, be using for the tour so that way the darkness wouldn't be so much of a, a factor as so much of a I guess more of a, a it would kind of be more like a, a mood because things would still be darker uh, because it'd be dark but if we had a higher quality camera we can still have things be clear and present things in the best way that we can and uh, alternatively we can uh, also have uh, some virtual experiences would be pre-recorded so that way uh, people can just go through them whenever they want so if you were uh, over in BC and you wanted uh, that daytime experience like that beautiful uh, morning like sun rising type experience you could still get that regardless of your time zone thank you uh if i could add to that for a second um we would offer live tours but we would also like to expand into virtual reality tours uh 360 degree video tours or just regular video tours so those uh wouldn't necessarily have to be live and could be watched anytime Are there any more questions for our team before I ask them to leave the stage? Jeff has a question down below. Would you like me to read it or are you guys okay reading it? Uh, I can read it. Uh, was the biggest challenge to get your project up into the real world? How would the smaller mom and pop tour shops participate? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, to get the project uh, adopted into the real world, uh, obviously the biggest thing is uh, connections. Uh, the Newfoundland and Labrador government is already pretty good with a lot of uh, tourist attractions. They have, a, they have a system for in which smaller businesses can apply to them and that stuff uh, gets like their pan flips out in uh, visitor information centers and gets their information added to uh, the traveler's guide, which comes out uh, every year here in Newfoundland and Labrador with updated festivals, events, et cetera, and details for uh, different locations. Uh, so if in the ideal situation where we're partnering with the government, uh, we would have access to that. And for the smaller mom and pop shops, uh, it would be as simple as just uh, reaching out depending on what it is they're trying to provide. It would be easier for if they were doing, say, a restaurant or uh, or a shop uh, rather than an event because uh, from the technological side, the event needs a bit of uh, prep work. But uh, for the restaurant and the shop, it's just as simple. They get involved with either a uh, a flat fee for the restaurant or a or percentage of uh, income if we're not partnered with the Newfoundland government. And from there, uh, it's all good. So if if your nan knits a killer pair of mitts and she wants to sell them, she can do it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, judges, and thank you, Blaze. I would now like to invite team We Are Nervous to the stage. And Victorium, you are on deck. Uh, hello? Hi, I can hear you. Can you hear? Okay. Um, Munsef? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Can you... Yep, I can hear you too. All right. All right, I will be sharing my screen. Sure thing. <sighs> uh, can you see my screen? Yep, sure can. Are you ready to present? Uh, Yes. <laughs> okay. Your four minute timer begins now. Okay. So this is our app called Mind Relay. And so we designed this app um, regarding mental health because depression rates have tripled 
during these unprecedented times and we were in distraught um, based on this fact. So we kept it with um, a light blue theme consistently throughout the app because this color is calming and it is the color of mental health. Um, we called it Mind Relay because um, the users are relaying and communicating their mind to the rest of the com to the rest of the community using this app. Um, I'll press start now. So it so this is the home screen. It has the feed. Now this feed consists of video posts of the people that you follow. Now these video posts can be like um, projecting motivation your past problems and how you overcame them, the current problems that you're going to. And there's also a comment section under the post where the people that follow the person who had created the video post can give their thoughts and opinions. Um, you do need to make an account to actually access the screen. Uh, so I will get into that um, later. So this is the chat room therapy screen. Um, so we find it um, important that when, de when dealing with mental health, you talk to someone in person and actually hear their voice, hear where they're coming from, hear their problems, and allow um, both parties of the conversation to get things off their chest. So we had included this uh, chat room therapy. Um, there's two options. You can join random online users that are using the app and or you can arrange a call with your online friends. Um, there's a kid's help phone and a suicide a prevention hotline right here in case you need that for quick access. There's also these um, toolbars um, on, on the side of the screen. So the microphone, um, you can turn it off and on. Um, uh, the speaker icon, you can uh, turn up and down your volume and your and the camera icon you can flip your camera so it's basically like most other um like chat rooms and video calls so moving on to login to your account so this is where you log into your account now if you don't have um a sign up there's also a sign up option so if you don't want to log into your account every time do uh, you have the option to save login? Um, we value your security, so, there, uh, so therefore we give you the option to um, log in every time you launch the app. So speaking of sign up, this is the sign up screen. So this is unique about our app. Uh, we give you an anonymous option. Um, most type of like social media, uh, social media apps don't really give you this option sometimes. We gave um, the users this option because uh, they might want to keep their name private but still want to project their voice in the community. So uh, we had to, uh, so we found it important to implement this um, feature. Um, and so you're taking a step by making an account because when you make an account, you can access like most of the app, like the chat rooms and like making a post and things like that. Um, now I'll be bringing it to Munsev who will be explaining you the explore page. All right, so um, in the explore page, basically um, you can find posts made by um, other users of the app. So like the way our, um, like the posting works is that you make a video and like it should like it should like be it like in person basically you can't make like a text post because it's more like you can get you more like the message like you're trying to give to like uh other people with like mental health issues it's more like stronger if it's like in person and they can like hear your voice and so here you can see like they have like categories so like depression anxiety here you can like with these categories you can find like videos pertaining to like mental health issues that you're like relating to or you want to like learn more about uh and you also have a search bar if you're if you want to look for a specific like user that you've uh met before and also to the um if you like everyone make make your own post wait uh oh uh, yeah okay guys this that is concludes your four minute time limit Judges, if you'd like to join the call to ask questions, now's the time.
Hello. Hey guys, uh, thank you. Good, pre great presentation, important issue. Um, sorry to be the business school professor in the room, but I guess this you would see this maybe as a social enterprise or how would you monetize this? How would you pay for the development? And where would, who would be the people who would actually pay for this? It's a great solution. Is it more something that once again would rely upon government funding or have you thought that through, et cetera? Um, so, so I'm gonna say this again, depression rates have tripled. So um, we could get a partnership with the government if that's an option. And since this is like a national issue, um, I think the government would be down um, to uh, fund our page. And there's also um, other like f investors and we can also put in our own um, f income. Okay, thank you. So thank you so much for your presentation. I had a couple of questions that came up here, um, but one, I wanted to get some clarity with regard to who would be participating in the chat rooms. But I think depending on that answer, um, my question also extends to the videos, which is how are you gonna deal with the fact that you've got some maybe unqualified people out there giving mental health advice, even, either through the videos or in the chat room? So, with this right if there are um unqualified individuals giving false information or if there are any like internet uh, trolls or anything like that uh we have a strict of uh, reporting a future sorry i have a speech impediment i'm sorry um we have a strict um reporting feature where users can report um any post or videos that's false information or doesn't correlate with a mental health. And the creators of the app, me and Amuntov are also gonna be um, on the lookout for these type of things. Um, this is important because we don't want the purpose of the app steering into um, the wrong Great, thank you. Oh, sorry, I think you might have cut out there for a second, just the very last thing you were saying. Uh, yeah, so me and uh, Muntav are also going to be um, keeping on track with like the of reporting side um, because we don't want the app to go into like a different direction and we want it to uh, stay in the purpose of um, being around like uh, mental health and like not any false information for our users. Great, thank you Hello. very much. Got it, thank you. All right, you're welcome. No problem. My question would be that uh, as a coach, I'm I'm working with clients who have um, who have some struggles that they're going through. I wouldn't say that they have men mental health issues. I don't want to, you know, diagnose them, but they have struggles in their lives that they're going through and they use Instagram and the IGTV to share their stories and then uh, get in contact with people who, you know, who would support them. So what would um, set your platform apart from other platforms that people can share their stories and can support each other? Well, posting the videos is just like so one that's feature. that's a good... Oh, sorry. Uh, basically, uh, posting the... Oh, go ahead. All right. Basically, posting the videos is just like one feature of our, um, like, uh, our app. We also have, like, the chat room that we talked about, which is, like, basically similar to, like, an AA meeting where, like, people come around and they talk about their, uh, like, problems that they're facing and similar, like, stuff to that. But um, ours is more, like, dedicated, where, like, Instagram is more, like, general. Arts is strictly dedicated to uh, mental health. And like Instagram and uh, um, a platform like that, there's um, there's a lot more um, emphasis on like entertainment while our app is like specifically for helping the community. Um, and like apps like Instagram, uh, they do tend to make like some sort of profit. Um, our app is like, 
totally free and we don't try to profit off of um, the community's problems. Okay, Hello? thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any more questions, judges, before I ask the team to leave the stage? Uh, if anyone is speaking right now, I cannot hear them. No, I'm just giving the judges an opportunity to join if oh, they okay. would, if uh, any of the other ones that haven't asked a question would like to ask one. Uh, team Victorium, if you're here, you can go ahead and join the queue. Thank you so much, team. We are nervous. You may leave the stage. <laughs> All right. Thank you for having us. Have a good day. You too. Hello. Will there uh, be all four of you or just the three of you presenting today? Just the three of us. Just the three of you? Okay. Um, you can go ahead and share your screen and I'll let you know when you can start, okay? Can you see my screen? I sure can. Oh. Um, just letting you know there's a lot of feedback on your end. Oh. Do you have headphones or anything, or can you turn down the volume of your speakers? Yeah. Is that better? Uh, it would only happen if somebody speaks. So, yeah, I can hear myself and everybody else who will say something will hear the feedback from your mic. So if you have headphones, now's a good time to grab them before we begin. Okay, just a second. Sure thing. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Your fourth member is actually requested to join. Oh yeah, Adrian. There you go. Okay, uh, are you ready to begin? Uh, me, what? This is okay. Still trying to get the presentation to work properly. Okay, uh, yes, yeah, so we're ready to begin now. Okay, your four minute timer begins now. All right, hi everyone. Um, my name is Laughter Afolabi and we are Victor. And today we'll be proposing a solution for the economic recovery of thrift stores from the effects of COVID-19. So just to give you a little bit of backstory behind um, this idea. So my team and I love to shop at thrift stores, uh, but we noticed that larger thrift stores were closed uh, due to the pandemic and restrictions. And we have no, uh, and they had no online presence. And we wondered why they couldn't have any online presence. So we began to look into why um, such a restriction occurred. And after um, um, subsequent research, we found out and realized it was a problem with moving unique products from physical stores to online stores. And because of this, we created InSort. InSort is a sorting software and app that works by creating inventory databases for stores with unique products. So stores like thrift stores and such. So I'm just gonna give you a brief outline of how the software works. Uh, so InSort goes about, uh, collects information from people that want to make donations to their local thrift stores or charity organizations. So when uh, the donator, uploads information about the particular product they want to uh, donate, uh, it gets um, uploaded to the insert database, which is then the insert database goes ahead to um, match the images and generates possible matches for the products that you have, after which it is uploaded to the thrift store database and then produced as a product listing on the company's website. 
So this is just a simple product user interface of how we expect our product to sort of kind of work. So I uh, imagine myself as a donor, I am looking to don donate at Salvation Army. I click uh, one of our partners and then I click to donate. And um, if I'm about to donate a book, I select a book in insert and insert goes ahead to ask me information about the title, the author, year of publishing and others. All the information that I have, I give the application and then it produces possible uh, replicas of that particular product. After which it is then, I then click okay and then it submits it to insert and then I receive a QR code which allows me to tag my, donat my donation when I eventually move uh, from my home to donate my actual product to the charity store. So insert solves a lot of uh, problems and one of the benefits, some of the benefits that which insert will be solving is it's going to help optimize inventory features. It's going to give virtual access for thrift store customers and also um, product descriptions and display. So we plan on making money through this from this idea by licensing our software to um, big um, thrift store organizations like Salvation Army and Goodwill. And we also plan on supporting um, smaller thrift store businesses by hosting their stores on our software slash app. So with all that being said, I ask, I employ everyone to join us today in keeping our thrift stores afloat so that they can keep providing for our community at this time of uncertainty. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, judges, feel free to join the chat to ask questions. Uh, thank you, everyone. Great presentation. Uh, big issue for thrift stores and social enterprises and charities that are involved in this uh, sector. Um, okay. Kind of like Florian here, but what's your value proposition? Why wouldn't Diabetes Canada or um, Neighborhood or any of the other thrift stores or chains of thrift stores just go out and do it this themselves. What what will be the value proposition? Is it because you can go across thrift stores or mm -hmm. how are you going to go and, and collaborate across all these stores, which are highly competitive, although they are in a uh, social enterprise sector? Okay, uh, so um, I believe our value proposition is that um, the insert software is supposed to make the inventory sorting a lot easier and as to how they would upload it on website. So the current um, current uh, thrift stores that are online have individuals just going there and snapping the picture and uploading the information by themselves manually. So the insert software takes away half of that um, work. It, it reduces the amount of work they have to do. They don't need to snap the product picture or obtain the information by themselves. When people are coming in to donate if i have um uh, let's say a uh, medium adidas shoes i would put that information and then insert would generate images as to how the image would how the product will look when someone comes into when someone goes onto the thrift store's websites to see it so what we're offering is a software that is capable of basically taking information of their inventory and placing it on an online marketplace great thank you yeah, my question is that how do you deal with, or the software, how does it deal with the items that yeah. got uploaded but never make it to the store? So let's say I just upload a book because tonight I think that I want to donate a book, but tomorrow I have I don't have time to go to the store, and then I, and uh, the let's say the store is closed due to COVID, so. Yes. Okay. So um, we modeled the application for um, the stores to have um, contactless um, donations. So in a scenario, the only time you will be able to donate is if the store is offering like um, contactless donations, right? And also, if I did upload something and this and I do not end up taking it there, Insort does not officially register it on the company's um, products that are available for listing until on the other end, the company has um, acknowledged that the product has been received. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, so is it correct for me to say that the I, as the customer who's bringing in the donation, I'm going to be filling out this information? Yes. Okay. So my question is, why would I want to do that? So if I'm just piling stuff into a garbage bag, I want to drop it off somewhere, I just want it out of my house. 
Why do I want to take the extra time to fill in that information? Yes. So our, um, we thought of that when we were coming up with the idea. And then we also, we thought of um, creating um, propositions to the uh, companies we go to like Goodwill and Salvation Army to give the customers incentive for donating those things and putting that information up there. So stuff like a rewards um, system or a points card could be very encouraging for people to do that. Uh, so yes, that, that was the model at which we uh, proposed a solution to if a question like that arose. We do uh, hope the companies will uh, agree to creating some sort of points um, system to um, encourage customer participation. And just Great, to add you. to that, we um, we thought that if, if we, we appeal to their conscience and says, oh, this is a very difficult time and uh, not a lot of people are able to be at the store at one time. So it would be really helpful if the donor could please, please uh, go ahead and put this information in to help us and to help our future customers. So... <laughs> Great, thank you. Do we have any more questions for the team before I ask them to leave the stage? Yeah, just a quick question. How how do you propose that a thrift store would get its current inventory um, into your application? Um, because some of them have very, um, so, well, huge inventory. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, that that's a particular, that aspect, um, well, the thrift store would have to like, um, manually go up there and it, impute their information so the the app is mostly for any new incoming um uh, product so eventually when they get the old stuff out they can fully transition to just using the app to maintain that new inflow of inventory Radio, thank yeah you. and and in addition to that as well because we the reason that we we talked about this a lot was because we found that a lot of a lot more people are donating stuff so we figured that the, the new inventory would what would be what we would need to um, propose that solution for, as opposed to what they already have. Great, yeah. Fantastic design, by the way. Love the presentation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Team Victoria. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Team Asherar, you may request to join the presentation. Hi, will your fourth member be joining us? Um, no, actually, he's because he's at work currently. Okay. Yeah. Though he's just watching. A, just a quick question. Can you see my camera okay? I, I seem to have a filter on, I think. How do I change that? You don't really need your camera for the presentation, just the slideshow will do. Okay, I'll just mute. Okay, yep. No problem. Apologies for that. And uh, I just yeah, had a small no I just had a small request for the uh, judges. And while we're sharing our screen, um, we're going to be presenting a video. So if you can, try to maximize the screen for full effect. Okay, are you guys ready to present? Uh, yes. Sure thing, your four minute timer begins now. If you have been to any supermarket or mall lately, you'll notice that there's a person standing outside with a counter in their hand to count how many people 
are entering or leaving the building. Our system will take care of this issue by automating this process. So if you don't want to manually count, we are here to automate it for you. Now, what is a better solution than a system that counters the spread of COVID-19 and will eventually help us to get back to normal? Allow us to introduce Counter-19. Counter-19 is a real-time capacity monitoring system which delivers live capacity data with visual warnings when capacity limits are approached or reached. Counter-19 uses advanced counting sensors and is a fast and cost-effective way to measure capacity. We designed a full system to help businesses reopen and thus fixing the economy problem. This system can also be used in schools and universities to ease the recovery process, and this fixes the educational struggles that we're facing. Now, how does it work? Allow us to demonstrate using Memorial University as an example. When the maximum capacity limit is reached, a connected display screen updates the capacity in real time to alert and notify building users that the area is at capacity and is no longer safe to enter. That could be demonstrated by using our prototype that we built using Arduino components, which resembles a real life classroom. As can be seen in this prototype, we have an LCD screen that displays the current capacity along with two digital sensors that detect a person entering or leaving a room. And of course, we have a buzzer which acts as an alarm when the maximum capacity is exceeded. And there's more. We have even built our own website which shows real time capacity data for different places within a university, whether it's the gym, library, or dining hall. On the website, you can check the live capacity of your next destination. Instead of going to the library just to find out that it's full, you can simply use our website to check if there's space before even leaving your home. And we're not done yet. We understand that most of us use our phones as our go-to resource when searching for information. Thus, we are happy to announce that we even have an app which serves the same purpose as the website, but with a more user-friendly experience. Now, What's the future of Counter-19? We're expecting the system to be integrated with local and global businesses to help control the capacity of people in a building. This system can even be used after the pandemic is over to find out how many people attend a class at a university or just to see how many people are, are currently at your local gym. Our system is effective and very easy to use. This system can be used in classrooms, cafeterias, washrooms, you name it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Counter-19 a full system that will allow us to finally get back to normal. Now, to add to this video, we all know that data is the oil of the 21st century, and we plan to use that to our advantage as much as possible. Our plan is to integrate this system with Google Maps and Apple Smart Home. Now, we all have used Google Maps, and we all know that feature that says buses are usually busy at this time or whatnot. With this feature, we could update that data live, and this will allow for a better user experience overall. Additionally, say you want to arrive fashionably late at your friend's bridal shower. Well, you can do that if the host has the system in their house and integrates it with Apple Smart Home. Lastly, this can be very useful for universities to analyze how many students attend different classes and much more. To conclude, we built a full system that includes a website, an app, a YouTube ad, an actual company logo, and also a working prototype with Arduinos. For this hackathon, we were given four problems, and our system will provide solutions to three of these problems, all except the healthcare category. Thank you for listening to us, and this was a pleasure. And that concludes your four-minute timer. Judges, yes. if you have any questions, now's the time to join. All right, great, great presentation. Um, quick question: What's going to happen after COVID? What's what? Uh, so I know it's going to help during the recovery, but do you have ideas for after? Um, yes. So I'll take that question. So after COVID, um, this uh, system can also be used for. Um, so let's say you have, uh, for example, on Google Maps, um, when you click on a place, you can also see the activity of a place. Um, uh, on what day, on what hour. 
So this can be integrated with Google, where instead of using people's location services, and you know, as we know, people sometimes they don't have their locations and on and security and whatnot, uh, this can replace that and it gives you even a better result. And also you can check on Google where, uh, let's say you're gonna go to a restaurant and you wanna, you know, you wanna quiet, you know, uh, like uh, not many people you know, occupying the place or having many seats. So you can go on Google or even our website uh, and check uh, what uh, restaurants have, uh, uh, how many people are inside their restaurant. And yeah. Thank you. There's a question there typed out from Jeff in the chat. Are you guys okay to read it out loud or did you need me to? Um, I don't quite understand the question. Jeff, is there any way you can rephrase, re, uh, phrase your question? And while I let you type that out, uh, Steph, did you want to ask yours? Uh, sure. So, if I'm a big corporation, why would I want to have this product or why would I want the service? It's going to, I would imagine, deter customers from coming. If they see yellow, if they see red, they're going to be like, well, I'm not going to go to the store anymore. Whereas I could have just not displayed anything at all. And now I'd get those customers. Right. So this is also customizable uh, for the color. It's easy. That's easy to fix. Um, and uh, so for, uh, I thinking futuristically or not so far away uh, for enterprises you can also we can also have an, an rfid reader so let's say you're an enterprise and you want to see who's coming in who's going out um so and everybody say everybody have an rfid reader so we have this RFID, we, we would have this rfid reader installed where it could read who's entering and who's going and say if somebody entered who doesn't have an rfid you would also see that And to add to that, to that question, it will help big organizations like this to organize their services more because right now it's showing as red because it's not safe because we're still in COVID time. If this system is successful, then we uh, progress to a safe environment where we can have a lot of people in a room, right? And instead of an organization having to be overcrowded by a lot of people, it, it will save them the trouble of um, organizing their people or, you know, their the people they invite, basically. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. So Jeff has typed some more in the chat here. So his original question was, are there any potential technology related blockers or challenges for you or for your project? How do you solve, how do you solve them? Um, so, and then yes. he says, uh, so just, uh, just going to finish uh, his comment down here. He says, for example, false readings, the quality of the sensor. Um, yes, so that's what we're planning to test that out, right? But right now we're having two sensors, right? One at the front of the door and one at like a few feet after it, right? So if the first sensor is triggered and then the second sensor is triggered, then you know that somebody's walking in. However, if the second sensor is triggered and the, and the first sensor is triggered again, then you know that somebody's coming out. So therefore, this would allow for less false positives, uh, I would say, right? And other challenges that we might face are obviously the data. Because we would um, be asking a lot of data now, I feel like we would be, that would be a challenge in the future. But seeing as though everybody collects our data, every time you would go to a website, your location is already exposed. Everything is exposed already, right? So we're already just adding to that, capitalizing on it, and using it to everybody's advantage. And unlike social media, there's no depression here. So hopefully uh, th that answers your question. Can't, okay. So my question is uh, the, the alarm. So whenever we hear the alarm goes, um, goes off, it means emergency. It means there is, there is danger, mm -hmm. imminent danger right? Fire, whatever. <clears throat> so just because the Mon library reaches its capacity, that's supposed to be a place where I go because it's quiet, I can study, I can read, if I can go in at all. But 
when the brain hears the alarm, it goes fight or flight mode. So there is no such thing as uh, calmness or analytical thinking when I hear the alarm goes off. It's really like it, 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 it signals danger. So right. is it absolute necessary to remind me who is sitting in a library uh, for an hour and a half that, oops, the library just reached the capacity and it's alarmed me at a at a level of 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 sound and and puts me in a state of fight or flight mode my brain fight or flight mode so it would take for me like 15 minutes to get my heart rate back and to understand that and let's say i have no idea that what the alarm is about so how yeah. do you address that this alarm system so so um so I'm the one who made that uh, part. So, okay, so for the alarm, mm -hmm. so uh, it's controlled by frequencies. So you can alter the frequency on, you know, making a, a higher pitch or lower pitch, whatever pleasing voice that the human want, or, you know, it, that's also customizable. And um, also, it can you can also remove the alarm completely and just show on the screen. So that's also uh, can be done. And uh, yeah, so this the alarm, uh, uh, it just used for uh, a way where you are like you with, like instead of you walking in, it just reminds you. Wait, actually, just look up at the screen. As you actually reach the capacity, and also the volume of you know uh, uh, the volume of which the the alert sounds off. You can also decrease it or increase it. So, but that was just for the purpose of the demo, just to add that like in the future. Yeah. Okay, because another question that who do we really want to alarm about the that we um, overreached, you know, the reach the capacity. So who who do we want to alarm? Do we want to all people know who's reading in a library, or is just we want to um, notify the person who's letting people in the door, yeah. or what, or the right. last person actually? Right. That so. So so that so um, so I put an alarm there because we didn't have the components and uh, so even in St. John's like we need to actually order it from outside and that would take like at least two days so we didn't have the components but actually what I can do I can actually change the uh, the uh, buzzer that's what it's called the buzzer and put a speaker and for it to say for uh, for example like on a in a, in a soothing ways like please wait or yep. anything like that uh, instead of the buzzer so like the buzzer is just like a little feature. Uh, to give you uh, an idea of, you know, to uh, alert the client or whoever walking in, oh, wait, so it's actually, it's at full capacity. But yeah, that's also changeable. We can, you know, over, like, change it with a voice. Yeah, excellent. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, ex excellent. Um... Excellent app idea. Uh, so I've got a question and a tip. Uh, the tip is you may want to consider um, uh, places and sites that have capacity restrictions uh, and have had them for years because after COVID, like we have a COVID with capacity restrictions right now, but if you think of it like bars, um, nightclubs, places like that, they have to track their capacity down to the person because it, due to fire regulations and whatnot. Yeah, but I was just wondering, as you're developing your your product here, you're um, just wondering about the, the, the cost um, you know, how, how expensive would this be like for an end user? So if, say for instance, I have a restaurant or my grocery store chain or whatever, how much is it going to cost to install the system? And, um, and how do you, um, yeah, do, do you, I'm assuming you make your money from li licensing the system out to people um, and setting it up for them. Uh, so, okay. So the way that we thought about, uh, uh, so like, uh, uh, how we, um, charge the uh, the business so so first of all this is free for like regular people like who you know want to go on google see how many uh, uh, capacity on a, uh, on a restaurant so that's for free uh, so we're going to charge the people uh, who own the restaurant for example or the own the club or whatever and that's going to be a monthly subscription uh, so and that would give them uh, the ability to access their data as well as uh, you know, how many people are there and whatnot. So that they would have their own, almost like a, a dashboard that they can access to. Uh, but uh, speaking of the hardware, the hardware is actually very uh, uh, cheap. Uh, I haven't looked, like I, I didn't think about going to, uh, to see, uh, like to count up each of the little hard, uh, pieces. But for example, uh, the little buzzer, which I have here, 
it's uh, it doesn't surpass even ten dollars, like for this for the buzzer alone. Um, so um, yeah, so like it's it's definitely it can be definitely a hundred or less just for the hardware for everything for the hardware. But, yeah, part of the reason I was asking is whether or not it's worth it to, you know, give away the hardware yeah. for free and yeah. charge people for data services. But mm -hmm. fantastic, thank you. Any more questions for our team before I ask them to leave the stage? Okay, well, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. Uh, hi again. So that is the end of our presentations for the final round of judging. Uh, the judges are now going to go off and have another little talk. And um, there will be an update on the Slack as to when the closing ceremonies will be happening. Before the six teams run off, can you please send a picture of your um, solution? Uh, your app, your device, whatever it was, and the name of it to the email that Kamal will post in the session chat down there. Yeah, all six teams that presented, there will be an email posted. Yeah, there we go. Info at hackfrostnl.ca. Send a screenshot and the name of your solution to that email for the uh, closing ceremonies. The closing ceremonies will be happening soon i promise uh, i don't have a time yet because the judges have to go and talk so there will be an update as to when that will be in the slack so watch out okay <laughs>